Okay, so story time. Let's talk. Let's talk. Actually, no story time. I don't know what to talk about. Um, <laughs> let me fix this. I don't have my box, so I just have to put the camera further back. Welcome, you guys. Welcome to my mom's kitchen. Isn't her house beautiful? Um, she puts my house to shame, I swear to God. <laughs> So, um, I am here babysitting three dogs. My ass is babysitting three dogs, you guys. Um, so my parents have three dogs. They have a bulldog, a basset hound, and a weenie dog. The weenie dog is actually mine, um, but he has social anxiety, separation anxiety, social He's He's a little awkward socially too, but separation anxiety. Um, and so when he's not with the other dogs, he freaks out and he freaks out by crying. He won't eat. He won't go to the bathroom. He just like freaks out. So when I moved, um, the first time I moved into the apartment, I couldn't bring him with me because I tried to, I brought him into the apartment. I was ready to pay the extra like $50 to have a dog, um, and thank God I didn't because that first night that I had him there to test it out, he just freaked out. Like he would not move. He would stay by the door. Um, he cried all night. Like it was just really bad. So he, I had to take him back to my parents' house and I just told them he's yours now. Like he just has to be with the pack. So um, then when I moved into my house earlier this year, um, I attempted, I thought, okay, maybe because I have a house setting, the backyard, you know, he'll be happy. But <laughs> my backyard is really big and he's little, he's a mini weenie dog. He's not the standard, he's the mini. So he's, he's smaller than the standard. Um, so he's only like 10, 11 pounds and, um, him in that big backyard by himself. And there's a doggy door in my house. So I thought it would be perfect. <laughs> that was a no go either. So <laughs> So I just decided he's he has to stay with mom and dad and um, the dogs. So they're happy. My dad loves him. He's like his little lap dog, you know? So it it wasn't that bad. But um, I do miss him. So when I'm here, when I hear when I'm here visiting the dogs and taking care of them, um, he sleeps with me at night. So <laughs> I have him up on the bed and he just curls up to me the whole night. So I miss it. I miss those, like those times with my little weenie dog. Um, but taking care of the dogs is different from cats. That's for sure. So this morning I was like, since my husband's not going to be around, um, he's, he's up the hill, obviously <laughs> taking care of the cats and going to work and stuff. So he won't be down. He said he might visit on Saturday, but we'll see if he does it or not. Um, but because he won't be here, it's up to me to scoop poops. Well, not even scoop. It's more like shovel the dog shit and and um I thought I was gonna be able to handle it and you guys should have seen me this morning I was out there with a shovel and my shoes were on because it was the grass was wet and I got a whiff of the poop and I was just and there wasn't even there was like three poops that like they each had pooped yesterday and so <gasps> you just should have seen me I was literally gagging you guys I was gagging I almost threw up um it was really gross and <laughs> And I was kind of like laughing to myself because I'm like, how pathetic is that? That's so pathetic. And um, and I'm like thinking, I clean the cat, the cat poops, like the cat boxes. I have three litter boxes in my house. Why is this grossing me out? But it's just different when it's dogs and there's no litter box. There's just poop on the grass. And so, and you're shoveling it. It's just, it's just a different experience from cats. And I love dogs, but I never had to worry about cleaning up after the dog like that. Like my dad would always do it or um, me and my husband never had a dog. So we, it was just always cats. Like I've just always done the cat thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know why. There's just something about shoveling dog poop just grosses me out more so than like scooping a litter box of poop. I mean, like I could have a litter box in my living room. Um, when my husband and I were in the apartment, we had Luna's litter box like in the living room slash kitchen area. I know that sounds nasty, but like it never grossed me out. So I don't know. There's just something about scooping or shoveling dog poop that just really got to me. And my sense of smell has been really bad lately. Like 
Um, I was cooking enchiladas for my husband on Monday and the smell of the chicken was just like, Ooh, like it just was making me want to throw up. So <laughs> it was just really bad. Um, so I'm like, oh my God, I have six more days to get through of shoveling dog poops. So, so and I'm going to be on top of it. Like I'm going to do it. I figure I'm going to do it every morning so that it doesn't build up because there's three dogs like three dogs in one little backyard like one patch of grass like that's a lot of poops after a while so i need to make sure i'm on top of it every morning gonna shovel the poops probably throw up at least once i'm sure <laughs> hopefully the neighbors aren't awake so they can't see me you know it was it's just an experience and i hope that i can get through it so that's my little poopy dog dog poop story because uh, it was just gross <laughs> Uh -uh. so you guys um <laughs> so the only the plus sides about being here i mentioned this in my in my instagram stories yesterday so the plus sides of it is i'm i'm like literally five six seven miles away from work so it only takes 10 minutes to get there maybe not even 10 minutes but but the difference between down here and up the hill is and when i say up the hill like it's literally up the hill like you got to drive through the mountain to get to where I live um and it's I live in the desert so my parents live in like the valley I guess you could call it um the suburbs and so it's very different it's very different so up in the desert the roads are there's like not a lot of stop signs there's hardly any signals so you could drive through a long patch of road and not hit a stop sign or um or an intersection um that's just the way it is it's still developing up there and it's nice because the highways um like the roadways a lot of the speed limits are 50 60 mile per hour so we're driving pretty fucking fast up the hill <laughs> except for like the parts where the schools are and then you know the residential obviously but um for the most part those main highways it's 50 60 mile per hour and the speed limit on the freeway is is um is higher faster than it is down here so <laughs> so once you come down the hill the speed limits change um and then the neighborhoods and the streets down here there's like a fucking stop sign every block and there's like signals everywhere like and there's people everywhere it's really packed and crowded down here than it is up there so it may take 10 minutes to get to work, but I still leave half an hour ahead because um, when you're in traffic or like just trying to get from one, one light signal to the next, like if you're catching all those red lights, it's going to take you a while. So, <laughs> so it is like, it's kind of funny. Like I, I do, I am much, much closer to work right now where I'm at. Um, but the population, it's crowded down here. Um, but it is a nicer neighborhood. Like it was quiet last night. Um, the, you don't have to worry about random ass people roaming the streets. Like it's just, it's just different. It's different down here. It's a safer community, a safer, safer neighborhoods. Whereas up there, because it's still developing, you just have a lot of riffraff up there and, um, you got to have an alarm on your house and all of that. So it's just different. So, <laughs> so being down here is kind of like, oh, it's nice. You know, I don't, I don't feel like I feel safer, you know? Um, and I feel safer and you know all your neighbors whereas up there it's just like everyone is you don't talk to anybody you don't look at anybody like it's just a different community um, so anyways <laughs> so I was noticing that when I drive down here I'm like oh shit like the speed limits 35 not fucking 50 so <laughs> I had to remind myself like oh slow down you know you can't drive that fast and and then I, I just think like oh my gosh people drive so slow down here but I realize no it's the speed limits are different so yeah um so that's another thing but like I love thinking right now like for me if I was up up the hill it's 10 o'clock. I would have to leave by 1130 to get to work by one o'clock. So I always give myself an hour and a half extra. Um, whereas here, I'm like, it's 10 o'clock. I still have two and a half hours. I don't have to leave the house till 1230 to be at work at one. Like, it's kind of nice. Like, I have a whole extra hour. 
<laughs> so I got done, like I got ready fast. You guys, like I curled my hair, which I have to touch it up because it's, it's my mom's bathroom. Like she doesn't have that vent thing. So I was like, like sweating, getting ready. And so my hair didn't curl as much as I wanted it to because it was a little humid. So I'm going to have to run the, run the curling iron through it again before. But, um, I got ready all early because in my mind, I'm like, oh shit, I got to leave for work in an hour, but I don't. I don't have to leave my for work in two and a half hours, so <laughs> it's just nice. <laughs> it's so nice. Um, so I brought some of my decks down with me. I brought Halloween tarot. I brought the Tricker tarot, the Bohemian Gothic Silver Edition, and then I brought the Halloween Oracle, and I think I brought Madame and Dora's Fortune cards. So I'm gonna be doing readings this weekend, you guys. I work Saturday, so I'll be working um, pretty much all day Saturday. Um, all afternoon, but um, I will be working on readings tomorrow. So tomorrow, um, Sunday, I'll work on readings. <gasps> Excuse me. Woo! <laughs> when I talk too much and I'm drinking coffee, like I end up having to burp. So sorry. Um, so I'll be doing readings Friday, Sunday, and Monday because I have Monday off too. So um, if you guys are waiting on orders, I will be getting, getting through them. I'm going through them in order as I receive them. So just because you booked a reading like on Wednesday doesn't mean you're going to get it right away. I'm still work for like working through literally the first week of October orders. So I like to be fair about it unless the only time that I don't like I do it out of order is if I get a birthday reading and that person's birthday is like within a few days of them booking it. Usually when people book my birthday readings, you guys are pretty like good. You give me at least like a week in advance or so. But every once in a while, I'll get a birthday reading where someone books it and it's like the birthday is like the next day. And if I can do it, I'll do it. But I, I, I have to stay true to my schedule too. Um, so sometimes I try my best to honor the birthday readings like before the birthday or at least by that day because it's special. It's your birthday. But um, other than that, all other orders are done like in the order that I get them, just to be fair to my clients. Um, so what else, what else was I gonna say? Um, 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 but yeah, I'll be doing readings. I have a seance reading I'm gonna get done for myself um, tomorrow. So I am part of the Crow Conjuring. Um, it's a group where there's there's three wonderful witchy people um who put together this little community where you pay a subscription so you could pay, i think it's 13 dollars. i believe that's what how much i paid so it's 13 dollars a month and you get a subscription to this website that they created and you have a password it's, it's it's locked with a password so only those who subscribe get the password each month and you plug in the password and in their, their website, they have like readings, they have channeled messages, they have um, like Reiki sessions, like group Reiki meditation sessions. They have, um, they have like a little store where you could book readings at discount prices versus like what they normally would sell their readings and stuff for, um, like to the public. Um, and then they also have like little things that you could buy each month. So I, I had joined it earlier in the year. Um, I think it was like in February I joined. Um, and they were selling like they had little magnets with the crow. And I remember like before I had joined Crow Conjuring, I was seeing crows everywhere. That was like when my husband was starting to see the crow thing and all of that. So I felt like it was a sign. <laughs> so I joined. Um, and they were selling like little things. They ha I think they were selling, they're selling shirts now. They have like little bags and stuff. So if you want to, you know, you can purchase those things. Um, and then I left, I left, I had to leave Crow Conjuring. I think it was in the summer. I don't know. It was like around the time when I had to take Luna to the vet and I was like, the finances were really tight because fucking gas money was the, like my husband was, was paying for gas driving to and from like Sacramento, which is like a six hour drive. And you can only imagine how gas is for that. Um, so t things got tight in the summer for us. And so I was just minimizing all of my like extra spending. I know $13 is nothing, but like when, when I figure, when I add that to like, I was also subscribed to the, the witch's moon box, which is like 50, $55, I think. 
um, I just figured like that's like almost $70 that I can open up for myself by unsubscribing from these to these things at least until I feel comfortable. So um, I had to unsubscribe from Witch's Moonbox too and I was sad because October came and went, you know, pretty much. And so I didn't get the Moonbox for October, which is what I really wanted. But I was like, you know what? I just, I can't be spending that money right now. Like I need to focus because now we have a credit card balance to pay off. So, <laughs> so I did give myself a treat and I did resubscribe to Crow Conjuring because I did enjoy it. It was fun, you know, and I really enjoyed like the, the group meditations, even though I can't make them live every single time I want to go live to their group meditations and stuff. I can never do it because I'm always working or I have that freaking hour, hour and a half commute after work. So it's like, <laughs> I may think I could try to make it, but it's like, and then I'm, I ain't going to be playing that in the car driving because forget it. So, <laughs> so, um, I can never meet or make the, the live sessions, but I always just listen. I'll listen to the replays if I remember and stuff. So I'm, it's just, it's just something I do for myself. Like that's something for me. So, so if you're looking for like a subscription based thing to join, the crow conjuring is pretty cool. Um, I'll leave the information in the description box. If I can remember <laughs> after the video is all said and done. Um, what else? Oh, anyway, so, so one of the girls on there, um, I ordered a seance reading. So she did a seance reading for me the year prior and I really enjoyed it. And so it's just like a way for me to get reading, a reading done on myself because I do readings for everybody else. So it's nice to like have the favor returned to me. So I booked, um, a seance reading with her and we're going to do the session tomorrow morning. So <clears throat> I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to that and um, seeing what seeing what spirit has to say, what my guides my, may have to say, or just, you know, it's just, it's fun. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, I haven't booked any other readings on, for myself though. And I usually like, this is the time of year that I like to do that. So I'll probably go hunting around and see if I could book one or two readings from people that I follow. I like to, um, like I, I like to stick, woo, I like to stick with like, my main readers, you know, like the ones that I really enjoy reading for me, like that I have had read for me multiple times, but I also like to test the waters and see what other readers can do and like what, what, you know, what their services are like and stuff. So I might go and find something new, like somebody new to do my reading. We'll see. But, um, Usually like this time of year is the time of year that I like to book those sessions because it's just fun. It's a way to like dive into the witchy season, <laughs> which thinking about the witchy season, we're almost done with October. Like I was doing the daily message and I saw where it's the 17th today and I'm like, oh my gosh, like we're almost to the end like we're almost to the end so <laughs> it's kind of sad because um I love this time of year but it's also as much as I love this time of year it also seems to be one of the busiest time of year for me every year like the, I think I said it before in a reading or in a reading in a video where I feel like something always happens in October for me within the last few years. Um, it's usually October is usually the time of the month or the year that my parents go on vacation um, because the flights tend to be a little bit cheaper. And um, so they'll go visit my sister and usually it's October that they do so. <laughs> so I just feel like there's always like that weird patch in October where I'm doing some of my freaky, my freaky, what the? <laughs> Where I'm doing some of my spooky readings at my mom's house. Um, or like, I just, just, this month has just been crazy with my husband's graduation earlier this month. And having him back, I had him back for a week after having him gone for seven months. So I had him back for a week. And then it's like, I'm here and I'm apart from him for a week. So it's like... So it's just been a, one of those months where even though as magical as October feels, it goes by so fast because there's so much stuff going on. So, oh well, it is what it is, right? Um, What else? What else can I ramble and talk about? I don't think I have any other stories to talk about. 
Um, there's a couple decks that I want to order, <laughs> even though I shouldn't be spending money. Um, so I wanted to talk about like my wish list decks. I, there's like two that I have on my wish list. One of them is um, the Hedge Witch Botanical Oracle, which I have it in my cart on Amazon. <laughs> I'm probably going to end up just ordering it um, because I really want it. I love the look of the cards. They're like all white and then it's like drawn like the, 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 the herb is drawn in and then it's like partly colored. It's really pretty just the way that it looks. And so, and I'm like I was telling you guys before, I'm really into the herb stuff like the herb lore, I guess is what people call it. Um, and so I really want that deck. I just, I think I'm just going to order it. I've been looking to see if like Barnes and Noble will restock it because they had it for a while and I should have just bought it when they had it, but they don't have it anymore. And so none of those, none of the Barnes and Nobles down here have it. The one up there where I live doesn't have it. So I'm like, well, I guess I'll just have to order it off Amazon one of these days. So I'm probably going to end up ordering it cause I just, I want it before, before it's like no longer available. Um, the other deck that I have my eye on is the Marigold Tarot. Oh my God, that deck is so pretty. It's the one with the, it's all skeletons. Mm, excuse me. That's the deck that I should have bought before this fall season because that would have been a fun one to work with. But I mean, I would, I would work with it all year long. Like I don't have to just wait for fall to use a skeleton a skeleton deck you know I like I use my Oracle of Oddities a lot throughout the year especially spring spring I like it for spring because it has the flowers on it so the Marigold Tarot is another one where I'm just like oh that's on my wish list um I haven't bought that one though because it, it can be a little pricey I think it's like 60 60 dollars or something like that um but again it's like if you want something sometimes you just got to go get it because once it's out of print then it skyrockets to like crazy prices and then the other deck that's been on my wish list that I already pre-ordered it um is the um, is it the mystical creatures tarot I think it's mystical creatures tarot or magical creatures it's something like that it's by Baba Studios so Baba Studios came up with the deck. They have it black and white version, but they're coming out with a colored version. And I didn't buy the black and white because I knew I knew I wasn't going to like it. I knew I wasn't going to like that deck without color. It just looks like like you know like when you're opening a coloring book and it's if it's a real detailed coloring book and it's just black and white, you just want to color it in, obviously. Um it's like that. And so I loved the concept of the cards because it's all mystical fairy tale creatures. Um, but I did not like that it was not color. Um, and so that's why I never bought it. Well, they're coming out with a colored version and they did the pre-orders for it like months back. I want to say this was like in May. So I did. I pre-ordered it. Um, I also ordered a deck bag to go with it so I could put it in the bag because it comes in like a big box. And so I figured anytime Baba Studios is going to come out with a deck that intrigues me, I have learned my lesson to buy it new, to buy it when they when it first comes out, just to pre-order it, put the money in, charge it, and pay it later if I have to. <laughs> because Baba Studio decks do and they will go out of print real fast um, and when they're out of print, you're not going to find a Baba Studios deck for under a hundred dollars. Like it's just, unless you're really lucky, like I got real lucky with, um, with the first edition Bohemian Gothic Tarot, um, cause it was, you could, you were able to bid and nobody bid on that deck. So I won the bid and I think I only paid $60 or something like that for it. So, um, unless you, you know, you, you're lucky like that, like if it's meant to be, you'll find it. But, um. Baba Studio decks go out of print real fast and they're super expensive because it's just a good quality deck. So <laughs> so I ordered that one. So that's on my wish list, but I already know I'm going to get it because I pre-ordered it. Um, they put an email out saying there's a little bit of a delay as they're finishing up the guidebook for it. So um, <laughs> so they're, they're saying that it may not be finished this year. It's probably going to be more so like January, 
February next year or something like that. So I don't care. To me, as long as as long as I get it, <laughs> as long as I get it, I'm happy. So, um, so there's that one. And um, oh, another deck on, on my wish list is by um, Katie, the the Mystic Star Starseed Mystic. Katie, I never remember your name, your your username. Mystical Starseed, Starseed Mystic, something like that. Um, so she creates her own decks and she has a real eye for like the whole digital, like making things look really pretty. Um, Katie came out with the Universal Messages Oracle. I feel like it's Universal Messages. I wish I could show you guys, but I, I'm not in my house. Um, but it has like a lot of like those repeating numbers, the, the number sequences. It has like a lot of like geometric shapes and things like that. I really like that deck because it's just like, it's just, it's just really, it's really good. So anyways, she came out with, um, another Oracle deck called the Starborn Oracle. Um, it's starseed influenced and just like real pretty colors and just like really pretty, really beautifully put together. It comes in a nice hard box and all of that. So I put your deck, Katie, I put it in my shopping cart. And I plan on purchasing it probably by the end of this weekend. Like, I just, the only reason why I didn't purchase it was because I didn't want to get out of bed. This was literally like around midnight when I was doing this, by the way. That's usually when I make a lot of my purchases, like fucking late at night when I know I shouldn't be spending money. But the only reason why I didn't go through with the purchase was because I didn't want to get out of bed to open, to get my wallet to take out my card. <laughs> So um, I will be purchasing your deck because it looks really pretty. Um, and I really, I just want a star seed, in, like a star seedy deck. And just, I, I just, the idea of supporting somebody who is like an indie, locally indie deck creator, people who don't get a lot of, a lot of like, notice for the work that they put out there and they have some amazing content and amazing stuff I think it's just sad that people don't get a lot of recognition when they should so um I'm definitely going to be purchasing Katie's deck and I will have to do a review and all of that on it when I have my hands on it so I will be ordering it too um other than that I don't think there's any other decks on my wish list. Like there's cut like there's like a couple little ones. Like there's Rider Waite clones that I really like. There's a Winter Waite, which is like a Christmas Rider Waite tarot. I'm kind of itching to buy that one, but I'm not a Christmas person. Like I like Christmas. I like putting the tree up and all of that, but I just I just that's it. Like I'm not a Christmassy person. <laughs> But I think I just want the deck because it's a Rider Waite clone. And you guys know I love Rider Waite. So I don't know. We'll see if I purchase that one. If I do, it'll, I'll probably purchase it in November. So it'll be here in time for winter. But eh, we'll see. Um, Other than that, that's about it for my deck wish list. Um, what are you guys craving? What decks are you guys craving? Or what decks do you guys have, you know, coming in? Like, did you, have you pre-ordered anything? Like, what are you looking forward to getting? Because once I get my hands on that Mystical Creatures Tarot, I can't wait to show you guys because it's going to look really pretty. I'm telling you, like, Baba Studios decks are expensive, but they're so worth it. At least in my opinion, they're so worth it because the, like, the, the deck is just high quality. The cardstock's high quality. They're just really pretty. And at least in my opinion, some people might not think so, but to each their own. <sighs> Anyways, you guys, the dogs want to come back inside. So I'm going to let them in so that they don't start barking again. And um, I'm just going to watch TV or hang out, finish my coffee and whatever. I literally have two hours. Maybe I'll take a nap. I don't know. I'm also reading it. So I started it <laughs> I'm only like I'm only like that one that much in but I started it look at this book look at this book oh my god this is huge so I was joking like with myself but I was like I think I put it up on Instagram that it's probably gonna take me like till October 2020 to finish this book um, I really want to read it and get through it. I think it would be freaking amazing to, to do so. We'll see if I can finish this, but this is a big old sucker. So I don't know, just the idea of another creepy book. Perfect. 
just because October is almost over with doesn't mean we can't read creepy books, right? So I like reading horror. And my nails are black, so I already got like black marks on the, the page, the front page from my nail polish, so that kind of sucks. Um, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna take this to work, the book to work today. I'm um, gonna see if the girls that do the, the people in the library, there's girls that just cover books all day. <laughs> They do more, but they, they cover books. Um, I'm gonna ask them if they could put some protective covering on my book, like a library book does the for the paperbacks, because I know this is, this is the spine is gonna break. Once I get halfway through this, the spine's gonna break. Um, but maybe they could put something along it to kind of save it a little bit, or I don't know. So we'll see. But, um, but yeah, so that's what I'm currently reading. I am currently starting it by Stephen King. I didn't think I was gonna like Stephen King so much. I didn't care for his Salem's lot. I'll be honest, like there were some creepy parts, but the for the most part, I was kind of like bored. I needed a little bit more. Um, I love Carrie. I think Stephen King's Carrie is really good. So it's an easy, quick read. So if you're looking for something spooky, but you don't want to invest in like fucking thousands of pages, Carrie is really good. Um, and then the pet cemetery was good too. There was some slow parts though. I wasn't really feeling it sometimes. I found myself thinking about other things when I was supposed to be reading. So I just, I need a book that keeps me focused and stuff. And I don't know, I'm kind of scared about it. Like, I don't know if that's gonna do it for me, but we will see. Um, but if you guys are looking for spooky reads, I recommend Carrie. I recommend Pet Cemetery. I also recommend um, The Exorcist. I actually told one of my friends to read it this year and she's reading it and she's just like, <laughs> it's one of those books when you're reading it, you're like, holy shit. Um, so I recommend Exorcist too, if, you, if you're looking for something to read. Um, and I also recommend Silence of the Lambs. That one is really good. So, okay, you guys, I'm going to end this video now. We're just beyond 30 minutes. Have a beautiful day, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye, loves.